Well, next in the process is the fuselage. Got the tail feathers all done and decided I wanna go ahead and tackle the fuselage next. I've got some of the uh, bulkheads laid out there that are gonna get riveted together. I've got my text manual and parts drawing all ready to go. So I guess uh, first thing to do is get started with putting doublers on some of these bulkheads. Looking at the manual here, and it uh, looks like stations four and five are what I'll start on. And it's pretty simple. Just uh, put the pieces together. A doubler gets placed in there. I'll Cleco it in first. I'll have to match drill these holes on the top. So I'll get it all Clecoed in, match drill, deburr, and then I'll uh, put it together for real. I think uh, probably do solid rivets on this. I've got station four here. I'm gonna start by, uh, here's the doubler for the lower side. Start by checking the fit of that. And one thing I'm seeing here is that when you, when you rest it in place, the holes don't quite line up, but that's okay. Uh, this, once I, if I squeeze this together here, you can see they come into, into place. So what I'll do is I'll use my Clico clamps. I'll squeeze that into place there and everything should line up. I'll pop a couple Clicos in here, match drill. Check the rivet length I'm gonna need and it looks like it's gonna be a 4-5. So I'll go ahead and um, click this up here and I'll buck some rivets. Good 
going to do these rivets here now. Got it clamped to an angle plate just to hold the piece. You're bucking rivets. Sometimes you need three hands and you don't have three hands. So uh, the key is to make sure the work is, is held while you're maneuvering your implements here. Got the doublers on station four complete, top and bottom. Let's flip it around here. Backside there. So that's done. I'll repeat the same on uh, station five. Oh, and if you hate nails on a chalkboard, you'll hate this. Station five, same thing. Doublers are riveted to the top and bottom. And station five is complete. Here's station six. It's a little different. Doublers mount to the sides. And the doublers are nested together into a single piece here. I'll cut these apart and then one will fit there and one will fit there. This kind of reminds me of the days when I would build plastic models. You'd have the parts on a sprue and you'd, you'd break them off. Got the parts separated. I just used some snips and then followed it up with a little filing. Sanded all the edges down so there are no sharp edges here. And, uh, and then this piece here, this is uh, looks like HDPE plastic. It gets riveted on here. And I believe this is a guide for the uh, push tube for the elevator. So what I'll do is, uh, being that there'll be a tube that may be rubbing against this here, I'm just gonna chamfer, just break this edge on this opening a little bit. I'll just use a deburring tool. I'm just taking maybe 20 thousandths off. Oh yeah, there we go. Just makes it so it's not sharp. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can catch a reflection here. Just gives it a nice little break there. Got this station Coleco together. And same deal, I need to come in here and match drill these holes through the doubler uh, into the bulkhead. Got station six fully assembled and riveted up. Next, I'm gonna do station eight. And it looks like for station eight, we've just got a doubler that's gonna rivet to the back side or the flat side of the bulkhead. So here is station eight, here's my doubler. That is going to go like so. So I'll get these uh, prepared here. Got this one done. Everything's riveted there in place. By the way, my gloves here. So buddy of mine, Joe, he's a helicopter pilot and mechanic. Used to work for McDonnell Douglas, now Boeing. He's gone on to work for a space company, but he told me recently, hey, if you're gonna do a lot of riveting, get yourself a pair of impact gloves. And uh, I gotta say, I love them. Uh, it works great from holding the bucking bar in here. It really takes the shock out. So I call them my Spider-Man gloves, <laughs> but thanks, Joe. 
Next up is going to be station nine. Gets this doubler riveted to the bulkhead on the flat side. So I have station nine bulkhead here. I've got the doubler. I'm going to hit this with some sandpaper, break the edges a little bit so it's not so sharp. And that will get cleat code and riveted here. Well, damn, every now and then you'll get one of these where your rivet gun slips off the rivet. So I'll have to, I'll drill this one out and I'll replace it. Not bad, that's the second one that I've had out of all of the bulkheads so far. So I think my average is doing pretty good. Station nine is riveted together. On to station 10. This one's a little more extensive. We've got a bulkhead here, a doubler, and then another bulk bulkhead. It looks like these all get sandwiched together. We're not to rivet that top row. So I've marked over here, just a line here to help me remember not to do any riveting there. And effectively, I think what we're gonna end up with here, this will get put here, this will get put here, like so. Station 10 is complete. Stack up of three pieces riveted together. The manual says that the aft, bend the flanges of the aft doubler on the S10 bulkhead to be flush with the S10 bulkhead. And I see what they're talking about here. So right now they kind of make a Y shape. That's because they're formed in the same machine, a bending machine that uh, does both pieces and it's set up for that bend. Well, what we need to do is we need to take the aft one, which is this side here, and I'll take my hand seaming pliers and I'll bend this, this tab here to be in line with that. So right now it kind of goes up, it'll actually bend down. Looks pretty good to get my straight edge out here. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna do that to the other one as well, this side here. I recently upgraded one of my guns to a disposable liner and cup system instead of the screw-on aluminum cup that you always have to clean when you're done. I thought, well, I wanna try this out. I haven't tried one of these yet. So I think what I'll do is just to try it out, I'll, I'll prime these parts. I realized if I was gonna, I, I had no intention of priming these I realized if I was going to prime them, then I should have primed them before I assembled all these together. So this is an afterthought. This is really just, uh, I wanna try out my gun. So I'm gonna prime these with a two-part epoxy primer, a gray primer, and uh, I'll get all these laid out on my saw horses out there and see, see how I like this. I think it's gonna be nice not having to worry about cleaning the cup and everything, just pop this thing off run a little solvent through the gun and good to go. This is what I'll be using. Just a two-part direct to metal gray epoxy primer. So it's gonna be a four to one mix, four parts epoxy, one part of the catalyst. Two ways I could do it. My mixing cup system has a four to one graduated section here. So I could go four parts epoxy and then bring in one part of my catalyst. 
Um, I could also use my syringe to do the same, pull in 100 milliliters and then 25 for the catalyst. For small cups like this, little batches, I like to use these syringes, they're cheap. And that way you're not making a mess trying to pour out a gallon can. So I've got one for the uh, epoxy and I've got one that I'll use for the uh, catalyst. All right, we'll do 100 milliliters. I'll do 25 milliliters of my catalyst. I'm just curious to see where I'm at on my graduation here. So I'm, I'm a little over the four. So I'm not gonna use that. I'm just gonna use my uh, syringe. I wanna pour this into a, this I will pour into a cup because I can't quite draw it out of this. All right, I've poured some into mixing cup here and I'll draw in 25 milliliters. Put the cap on. Screw on the lid there. And what's nice about these is just a quick connect right onto my gun. I did have to machine this adapter. They didn't really make one for this gun, so I kind of had to modify this. Hopefully it works. If I don't have primer running out everywhere, I guess I did a good job. All right, let's get to some spraying. Yeah, I'm really liking this. I think I'm forever converted. I don't know why I never switched to these sooner. Um, you can see what it does is as it as you use it, it just kind of crumples up. Kind of reminds me of those disposable baby bottles, really. What's nice about this is I can shoot in any orientation. I don't really have to worry about, you know, I can shoot any way I want. Why didn't I switch to these sooner? I don't know. That 100 milliliter paint mix was perfect. That was exactly enough to get this side of all these parts here. It's funny, uh, I didn't notice it until I get the primer on, but I see I missed a rivet there and I missed a rivet there. With the primer, you, you can see the contrast now when it was just aluminum, I couldn't see that. So I'll get those fixed out. I think I'll end this episode here and just make this as a bulkhead episode starts to get pretty involved when I work on getting the tail cone skins and the bulkheads put on the tail cone. That'll be it for now. Uh, I guess next episode is going to be putting those bulkheads on the tail skins, or tail cone skins, and getting that tail cone put together. <laughs>